Good morning, all. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Hmm. Okay. So, in last class, we were talking about the requirement of differential amplifier. Why it is so important, and why it is needed in integrated circuits. So, to summarize, the first thing is that in integrated circuits. lots of transistors are available so there is no problem of using more transistors in integrated circuit but the advantage that we get with this is the first one i said it rejects the noise because if the noise suppose supply voltage creates some kind of a noise here so whatever the effect of a noise at this position will be the same effect at this position because these two points are very close to each other and the output is taken differentially differentially means v out is v out 1 minus v out 2 so this this point i will call it as v out 1 the output at this point and the output at this point is v out 2 so if suppose a spike is created here same spike will be created here and if i take the difference between these two will be zero so it rejects the noise it is good in rejecting the noise so there are different performance parameters that actually categorize the differential amplifier we will study about those parameters later on okay now we will see and what is the second third advantage i said is possible to couple the amplifiers directly we don't require external capacitors for coupling of amplifiers they can be coupled directly okay now when i say a differential amplifier here i have written it as v in so this v in and v in to consist of two kind of components one is called as v in cm plus some value which is called the vid by 2 while at this end the input will be v in cm minus vid by 2 okay vid here stands for differential input it is called as a differential input while v in cm is called as a common mode input common mode input suppose for example if this common mode voltage here is 2 volt then here will be also equal to 2 volt so value will be same on both sides so that's why it is called the common mode input over it there will be ac signal superimposed so that is represented by vid differential input so there is common mode input and a differential mode input so two kinds of inputs will be there how they are generated how they come into picture we will see it later on okay first i will talk about what is common mode input so suppose that i have applied a common mode input here i will call this as v in cm and here also the same voltage is applied v in cm this is the average value of the input voltage that has been applied v in cm now iss is ideal dc current source used for biasing how it is implemented can anybody tell me how iss is actually there in the circuit transistor in saturation so somebody say that if can i call this as iss suppose if i connect this to vb and this is the rest of the circuitry can i call this as iss can i call this as iss yes sir yes sir given if vb is greater than the threshold okay so this will be in saturation so is it a good what is what are the ideal properties of a constant current source so resistance will be infinite resistance should be infinite what is the resistance offered by this r not r not is it infinite no sir no so it is not ideal current source 
but in the analysis that we are going to follow here we are assuming that the, this current source is ideal so this is not good way of doing it so what is done here is instead of connecting a single transistor what is done here is a cascode current source is used i think this you have studied it already right yes sir so this is the cascode current source then there will be another transistor here and this is connected to some current i so i is converted into current source suppose this is this is m1 this is m2 this is m3 and m4 can you tell me what is the resistance now between this point and the ground in this direction what is the resistance r03 r01 r01 is approximate value okay this is the approximate value but what was the previous value in previous case when only single transistor was there r03 only r03 or r0 now you can see what is the value of say r r0 is 10k what is the value of gm can you tell me what is the range of gm what is the range of gm sir is it in millisecond range yeah it is in millisecond right so you can see that now 10k multiplied by 10k multiplied by some millisecond so millisecond means k, 1k will cancel but still it is multiplied by 100k so is it it is a very huge value in comparison to 10k right right yes, so it is moving towards the ideal value but what is the problem here in using this transistor using this some minimum voltage is required across this current source right what is the value so addition of the two threshold voltage addition of two over drive so, voltage two over drive it is vo v1 plus vo v3 plus threshold voltage vth do you agree do you agree this is the minimum voltage that is required across m1 and m3 for this to work properly do you agree what is the voltage at this point what is the voltage at this point it is vgs2 plus vgs4 right yes vgs2 plus vgs4 and you know that you know that in order to m3 to operate in saturation right what should be the voltage at this point with respect to gate voltage what should be the voltage at the drain of m3 with respect to gate so it should be greater than you so it is vgs2 plus vgs4 plus vth 3 should be the value you should understand suppose if i take the transistor what is the condition for transistor to be in saturation suppose this is the transistor m1 what is the condition for this is suppose gate what is the transistor m1 to be in saturation vds should be greater than for nmos greater than or equal to vgs plus vgs minus vth okay what is the meaning of it so vds minimum is equal to vgs minus vth okay so es is common right so it is vd minus vs and vgs is vg minus vs so yes gets cancelled so vd should be equal to vg minus vth drain voltage should be less than gate voltage by 1 vth okay so what is the gate voltage here what is the gate voltage here sir vgs2 plus vgs4 vgs2 plus vgs4 so what should be then the drain voltage minimum value of drain voltage gate voltage minus threshold voltage right yes that is correct so gate voltage minus so this is should be minus vth3 right so this is the minimum voltage how i can write it vgs2 minus vth2 
plus VGS4 minus VTH4 minus VTH3. What I have taken additionally? What I have taken additionally here? VTH2 should be cancelled plus VTH4 should be cancelled. So I uh, added, subtracted and added it. What is this? VOV2. VOV2. This is? VOV4. VOV4. And you know that VTH are same for all the transistors, right? So VTH3 and this will get cancelled. So what is this? VOV2 plus VOV4 plus VTH is the minimum voltage required across this for transistor to remain in saturation. Can you tell me what is the ideal value? You tell me example. Uh, what should be the value of VOV? 0 0.1 volt for example. 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 plus what is the value of VTH? 0 0.4, 0 0.5. 0 0.4, 0 0.5 you are in, uh, in say 600 nanometer technology it is almost 0 0.7 volt. So what is the value of this? 0 0.6 volt. So minimum voltage required across this current source is equal to 0 0.6 volt. Understood? If you apply the voltage less than 0 0.6 volt, it is not going to operate as a current source. So minimum value is always required. But here we are assuming that your circuit is, the current source is ideal. What is the meaning of ideal current source is its impedance is infinite and it requires positive voltage, very small positive voltage to operate it as a current source. But in actual practice, neither the impedance is infinite nor the minimum voltage is very small. It is 0.6 volt, which is a very large value. When we operate the circuit at say 1 volt or 2 volt, it is a very large value. Clear? Is it clear? This concept clear? Any question? Now, so I am assuming here that ISS is an ideal current source. Okay. Now, what I said, V in CM is the same voltage applied to the gate of M1 as well as M2. Okay. What I said in the last lecture, even if I change V in CM, the current flowing through M1 and M2 is not going to change. It will be ISS by 2. But for that to happen, both M1 and M2 should be in saturation both M1 and M2 should be in saturation and the current provided by ISS is a constant value. It is not very, right? So with this information, I should find out what should be the minimum and maximum value of V in CM so that transistor M1, M2 remain in saturation, right? Can you tell me what should be the maximum value of V in CM. For this to happen, what should happen? Transistor M1 should be in saturation. I am talking about on one side. Same will applicable on the other side also. For M1 to be in saturation, suppose this point is say, some I will call it as a X and this point is S. What is the condition for M1 to be in saturation? Vx minus Vs, which is Vds should be greater than VGS minus VTS. What is VGS? V in minus VS. V in CM minus VS minus VTH. This condition should be satisfied. So you can see that VS gets cancelled. So VX plus VTH. So your V in CM should be less than VX plus VTH. Can I call this as V in CM max? V in CM max will be equal to Vx plus Vth. Can you tell me what is the value of Vx when the current flowing through M1 is ISS by 2? So what is Vx? Minus ISS by 2 also. Vdd minus ISS by 2 into RD, right? Simple voltage division rule. So ISS by 2 
into rd plus vth this is the maximum value of v in cm if it goes beyond this what is going to happen if input common mode voltage becomes more than this what will happen what will happen to m1 and m2 it goes into so out of saturation it moves out of saturation which is not good we should not operate it in out of saturation region you know the reasons for it right can you tell me is it possible that this value can be greater than vdd also so which value vdd minus iss by 2 into rd plus vth can it be greater than vdd So if uh, ISSRD by 2 is less than 2.4, so if VTH is greater than ISS by 2 into RD, right? It might become so. It is written as V in CM max is written as minimum of VDD comma VDD minus ISS by 2 into RD plus VTH. if it is greater this if this is greater than vta vdd you should consider vdd as v in cm max understood it cannot any voltage cannot be greater than vdd so this is written in this way okay so when you take we are considering the current direction <laughs> current direction is always here na v in cm is a positive value current flows from drain to source right Yes, sir. Is that why we are taking a uh, VDD minimum value? The current current cannot be in opposite direction. If in NMOS, if the current flows in opposite direction, the name of the terminals will change, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So this is the minimum value of V in CM. Sorry, maximum value of V in CM. Can you tell me what should be the minimum value of V in CM? What I said. there is some some voltage required across iss cannot be zero right even if it is ideal this voltage cannot be zero so if i call the voltage minimum voltage required across iss is as v iss okay so for ideal current source it might be point not not 1 volt it should be some positive value it cannot be zero circuit is not going to work if there are two equipotential points when voltage at this point and this point is same current is not going to flow right it is against the law for the current to flow there should be some potential difference between two points so i am assuming that v iss is the minimum voltage required across iss then what should be v in cm minimum what should be value of v in cm minimum v i s Plus V G S one, right? Don't say that V T H. So what is V I S S? V I S S is a minimum voltage required across I S S for it to operate as a current source. Okay. Minimum voltage required across I S S to operate it as a current source, right? Plus VGS one is a voltage, and that VGS one is of course greater than VTH one, right? But you cannot say what should be the value, right? So what should be this value then? I can write it as VISS plus VGS one minus VTH plus VTH, right? Can I write it in this way? Right. So what is it? Um, I use it plus plus what? V over V over drive plus V T H. Now you observe that I I I I don't like to write it as V G S. I will be always writing it in terms of V over drive. It is an important quantity. You will see it in a design that we. assign some overdrive voltages to the transistor and from that we calculate the size of the transistor so vov is a very important parameter for me when i go for a design of any amplifier 
So I am writing it in this format. So this is the minimum value. So I. Uh, yes. How did you got the equation for V in CM minimum? V in CM minimum is this volt, this voltage plus this voltage, right? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah. Uh, Voltage across, uh, this is simple, uh, what is called the switch off clock. Uh, but my doubt is, uh, is it the minimum uh, voltage where the MOSFET has to act as an amplifier, like in the saturation region? Mm -hmm. uh, so you should understand this. Uh, originally, I drawn the circuit, right? I drawn the circuit. OK, who will decide the voltage at this point? Which circuit will decide the voltage at this point? Lower circuitry or the circuitry connected here? The upper. Upper circuitry, right? Whatever voltage at this point, minus VGS will be the voltage at this point. Agree? Yes, sir. Now, what value of VGS I will be choosing here? Now, here also. What value of VGS I will be choosing here between gate and source? What value I will be choosing of VGS of M1? That should cause current should be equal to ISS by 2, right? ISS by 2. So that value can be anything. It cannot be simply VTH. It should be more than VTH. So what is that value? We don't know. So I simply return it as VGS1. Right? So I've written it as VISS plus VGS1 is the minimum value and I converted into it. So, so I've got the equation in this format. So can you tell me now what is V in CM? V in CM should be less than or equal to minimum of VDD comma VDD minus ISS by 2 into RD plus VTH and should be more than which value? VISS plus V overdrive plus VTH. So you should understand this equation. Your input common mode voltage should be within this range. Uh, so okay. Huh. Uh, could you exactly mark what VISS was on the diagram? VISS is this voltage, minimum voltage required across VISS. This is the voltage. Okay, sir. Thank you. Across current source, some voltage is required, right? Across Thank current you. source, some voltage is required. So it is VISS. Yes, sir. And, sir, one question. Why is it not uh, like we are trying to like keep the transistor in saturation right by applying the V in CM? So V in CM should be greater than like the VISS plus uh, VOV, that's it, right? Why is there an extra VTH term there? VOV, what is the value? It should not be VOV, you should understand. So you should understand. Suppose my VTH is 0.4 volt and VOV is 0.1 volt. So what is VGS? Uh, so 0 0.5. 0 0.5. So which can, should I consider VOV? Uh, sir, we would want the uh, V in CM to be greater than VISS by VG, right? That is what we want. By uh -huh. so, 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 by so what is that value? So what do you call this? This is not V overdrive. Voltage between gate and source is not V overdrive. It is VGS. Yes, sir. So that should be greater than VTH, right? Right, right, yeah. Okay, yeah, got it. Sir. Right. So you should consider now my question. Next question is if my voltage, common mode voltage is within this range. So I will give you example. Suppose my ISS by 2 into RD, suppose this quantity is I am getting it is suppose VDD is equal to 2. I am getting it as say 1.8 volt, this quantity. Okay, and suppose VISS is say, say 0 0.6 volt plus say 0 0.1 plus VTH is 0 0.4. How much it is coming? So How much it is coming? 
1.1 volt, this is 1.8 volt. Now suppose I applied the voltage here. I applied a voltage within the range 1.1 to 1.8 volt. My next question is, suppose V in CM is equal to 1.5 volt. What will be the current flowing through M1 and M2? Suppose ISS is 0.4 milliampere. I'm just giving you an example, 0.4 milliampere. What is the current flowing through M1 and M2? So 0 0.2 each. 0.2. If the voltage is 1.1, what is the current? What is the current? 0 0.2 milliamps each. Till 0.2 milliampere, it will not change. And that's why we say that for a differential amplifier, the input common mode voltage should not have one value. It cannot be, means there is no requirement like it should be only one fixed value. It is a range. If you are able to maintain the input common mode voltage within this range, your circuit is going to operate very correctly. No problem. Transistor M1 and M2 will remain in saturation. That's the advantage we have. So what will be the DC voltage at the output? What is the DC voltage at V out one? What is the DC voltage at V out one? It is VDD minus ISS by two into RD always. Whether the voltage is 1.1 1. 1 volt, if the common mode voltage is 1.1 volt, or 1.3 volt or 1.5 volt or 1.8 volt for all values the the voltage v out one dc value will be vdd minus iss by 2 into rd clear so this is called as input common mode range and what is the output common mode voltage always what is the v out which is equal to v out one minus v out two what will be the value what will be this value v out which is equal to v out one minus v out two for input equal to v in cm what will be this value what will be this value? So it will depend on the values of uh, the, both the rds so zero. zero na rd is same rd is same right. iss by two is a so Differential output voltage for common mode input is zero. Okay, so that is the advantage we have from this circuitry. So when I connect the output of the circuitry to the input of the next stage, I should make it sure that the output common mode level at V out one and V out two should be within the input common mode range for the next circuitry. What I said, suppose I have one differential amplifier. This is one differential amplifier. I'm not drawing it completely. And suppose I connect the output of the first differential amplifier to the input of second differential amplifier. So this is connected here and this is connected here. Can you tell me now? Here. What is the input common mode range for this now? What is the input common mode voltage for this transistor, for this uh, differential amplifier? So it is V out of the first one. V out of the first one, right? So output common mode level at this point and this point, sorry, I connected it here. Okay, output common mode level here and here will be the input common mode level for this. And you know that? I have a range option. If my input common mode voltage is within certain range, I don't have any issue in the operation of a circuit. So that is the advantage we have in case of differential amplifier. Is it correct? Any doubt? Any question? Any question? Now the second case that we are going to study is called as the differential input. So first I will explain it with the help of example what I am saying. Okay, now the first question comes into a mind, how I can make sure that the voltages that are applied, suppose this is circuit. I am just giving you example of 
a simple circuitry now circuit is going to become complicated later on once we study actual practical circuits but to understand the concepts we are applying suppose somebody will say that v in 1 is a voltage here v in 2 is a voltage here I, and i don't have any relationship between these two v in 1 something different v in 2 something different and uh, even they are not equal anything like that can i write this v in 1 as v in 1 by 2 minus v in 1 by 2 plus v in 2 by 2 it is something like that. okay i will just write v in 1 by 2 plus v in 1 by 2 plus v in 2 by 2 minus v in 2 divided by 2 is it correct if i write v in 1 like this Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. So V in two also I I will write V in two divided by two plus V in two divided by two plus V in one divided by two minus V in one divided by two. I am not writing anything different. Can you tell me what are the common terms which are present on both sides? Can I write it as V in one plus V in two divided by two here? This is V in one plus v in 2 divided by 2 right yes sir. so this term and this term so what is the other term here v in 1 minus v in 2 divided by 2 plus here it is v in 2 minus v in 1 divided by 2 agree yes sir. what is this voltage is, is this the same voltage on both sides? Uh, yes, sir. So can I call it as a common mode input? Uh, yes, sir. Because it is same, so it is a common mode input. Now can you tell me what is the difference between these two? Sir, one is a negative of the other. One is a negative. Magnitude wise they are same? Uh, yes, sir. Same yes. magnitude but negative same. But opposite sign, right? Same magnitude but opposite sign. This kind of input is called as a differential input and we represent it by VID. It is V in 1 minus V in 2 divided by 2 or minus of V in 1 minus V in 2 divided by 2. So this I can write it as minus of V in 1 minus V in 2 divided by 2. This is V in CM minus and this is V in CM plus v in 1 minus v in 2 divided by 2. So even if you apply the voltage which is different, the circuit is going to assume that your common mode input voltage is v in cm which is equal to average of the two values and the differential voltage will be difference between these two divided by 2. v in 1 minus v in 2 divided by 2. Right? So you should understand now that the circuit is when I draw a differential amplifier, I will be showing it something like this. Okay, so it has two voltages. One is VID and second one is V in CM. Here it will be minus VID, right? And then V in CM. What is this voltage that is you, that you mentioned? What is this? It is a superposition of two values, right? Yes, sir. V in CM plus VID. And this is V in CM minus VID, right? So they are equal in magnitude, opposite in direction as far as VID is concerned. So this is the circuit that we have. Okay. Now, now I should I I, I calculated what is the effect of V in CM. What is the use of V in CM? It is like a biasing. It will divide this current ISS by into two equal values. Now it comes VID is a small differential input voltage. Okay. So I said in the circuit, it is possible for me to 
study the circuit by principle of superposition. So I considered what is the effect of V in CM. Now I will consider what is the effect of VRE. So what I will assume that I applied a voltage which is differential voltage. So I will call it as this as a VG1, this as VG2. So this is the current source ISS. Right? Can you tell me what will be the value of VID? What is the value of VID? VG1 minus VG2 by 2. VG1 minus VG2 divided by 2. Right? So this value can be anything. So here I am going to assume that suppose this voltage is I will call it as a V in 1 now instead of calling it as VID. So this is the AC value. So on this side it will be minus V in 1, right? This is VDD. This is RD. Okay. Now you tell me. What is the voltage at this point? What is the so voltage at this point? at this point Vs. What is the value of Vs? Or I will call this voltage. We know that I will call this voltage as V in 2. What is the difference between V in 1 and V in 2? V in 1 magnitude wise V in 1 and V in 2 are same but they are opposite in direction. What is the voltage at this point? Vs. This is M1. This is M2. What is the voltage at Vs? It is V in 1 minus VGS1, right? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Yes. What is the voltage from this side? It is V into minus VGS2. Agree? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. V in 1 minus. And both should be equal. Both are equation for Vs only. So, V in 1. So how did you get rid of the A uh, DC voltage? Huh? So how did you get rid of V in CM? So, I said I am applying now principle of superposition. Okay. In so, you are saying that V in 1 consists of a DC part as well as an AC part. No. I am assuming that in how the principle of superposition is applied. Suppose there are two voltage sources. And I have to find out the effect of both on this resistor. What I do? I consider one voltage source, other is short circuited, right? Yes, sir. So, the voltage source is not removed from the circuit. In practical case, it is not removed. We assume that its effect is zero. So the, the that V in CM is still there, but we are assuming we are not considering its effect. You okay, know so that in the linear circuit, I can apply the principle of superposition, right? Yes, sir. Ah, so, what is going to happen? V in 1 minus VGS1 will be equal to what? V in 2 minus VGS2. Right? So, I will be getting the equation. So, voltage at this point. Now, suppose I am drawing here a signal. Suppose this is the V in 1. How will be V in 2? Is it like this? Out of phase? Okay. Now, suppose at this point V in 1 is positive, right? At this point, at time equal to T1, V in 1 is positive. At the same time, what about V in 2? It is? Negative. Negative with respect to reference value. This is the reference voltage. This is the reference voltage. What is this reference voltage? What is this reference voltage? V in CM. CM. V in CM is there. We are not just considering it. It is V in CM. This DC voltage, say 2 point, say sorry, 1 point, 1 volt, and this is also 1 volt, DC value. And suppose uh, the AC value that is superimposed, which is VID, is suppose having an amplitude of say 0 0.1 volt. Okay, so what will be this value? 1.1 volt, and what will be this value? Sir, addition 1.2. 
addition or subtraction now? Uh, so actually, I'm not able to see your cursor. Huh? Uh, I'm not able to see your cursor. I think are you, if you're pointing towards the draw, then my subtraction. Okay, so th this will be 1.1 hold. This will be 0.9 hold, right? Yes, sir. 0.9 hold. Okay, so this is 1.1 hold. What will happen? Is the current ISS is going to flow through M1? <coughs> is the current ISS is going to flow or it will be greater than ISS? Initially, when DC signal was, sorry, AC signal was not present, the current flowing through M1 was ISS by 2. This was ISS by 2. Now what I have done? I have increased the gate voltage of M1 by small value and decreased the gate voltage of M2 by small value. What will happen now? Sir, as long as it is within the range, like acceptable range, it won't change. It is going to change, right? Because I am not applying the gate voltage same now. What is, the, what is the input voltage here? It is V in CM plus V in 1. And what is the voltage here? V in CM minus V in 1. So, so the current through M1 will increase and the current through M2 will ah, decrease by the same magnitude. M1 will increase. So I will say the current flowing through M1 is delta I. ISS by 2 plus delta I. Why delta I has come? Because I applied differential voltage now. What will be the current flowing through M2? ISS by 2 minus delta I. Why minus delta I? Because you know that the addition of these two currents should be equal to ISS only. Right? So ISS by 2 plus delta I plus ISS by 2 minus delta I will be the total current flowing through the current source. What has happened? What has happened? The current through M1 has increased by some value. At the same time, the current through M2 has decreased by the same value. Right? Right or not? Now, when this happens, can you tell me what will be the voltage here? VD D minus ISS by 2 plus delta I into R plus delta I into RD. This is V out 1. And what is V out 2? VDD minus ISS by 2 minus delta I into RD. Agree? How we measure the output voltage? V out 1 minus V out 2. V out 1 minus V out 2. Can you tell me what will be this value? 2 delta I RD. 2 delta I RD plus or minus? Minus. Minus. Right? Minus 2 delta I RD. What I got now? I got some differential output voltage. Why this voltage is present? Because there is a differential input signal present. So this is a response of a differential amplifier for differential input signal. This is the response of a circuit for differential input signal. Okay? Is it clear? Yes. Okay. Now I will I will define what should be now what should be the value of huh? any question? Any question? Any doubt? So the circuit will work. The, the current flowing through M1 and M2 will be equal in magnitude but opposite in direction when differential input signal is applied. How the differential input signal is applied? What is the relationship between V in 1 and V in 2? V in 1 is equal to minus V in 2. V in 1 is equal to minus V in 2. 
for the circuit to work and how it comes into picture i already explained you with the help of this description okay now suppose i have circuit something like this so this is rd rd this is m1 m2 suppose in the presence of only input common mode voltage what is the current flowing through both the transistors iss by 2 and iss by 2 can you write the equation in terms of iss by 2 how the current iss by 2 can be written iss by 2 will be equal to half mu n cox w by l vgs1 minus vth whole square agree for yes. m1 same equation will be there for m2 what is this voltage called vov vov right so iss by 2 is half mu n c ox w by l v o v square so from this what is the equation for v o v square root of i s s divided by mu n c o x w by l what is this overdrive voltage what is this overdrive voltage is it responsible for current equal to how much how much current is flowing for this overdrive voltage in m1 and m2 iss by 2 so this is the overdrive voltage corresponding to corresponding to iss by 2 current right now suppose i applied here a differential voltage vid i now suppose this is v in 1 this is v in 2 okay suppose if i increase this by some value so this value will go down right because they are differential input voltage what is going to happen this current will increase while this current will decrease right if i increase v in 1 in value magnitude if i increase it v in 1 will increase this will go up this will go down so current i1 will increase while current i2 will decrease can you tell me at what point at what point the current iss will completely flow through one transistor okay i am again right so when v in 2 is less than v in 2 iss by 2 plus delta i is the current flowing through m1 right what is the current flowing through m2 so i is 2 minus delta i minus delta i now suppose so delta i is equal to iss by 2 ha ah, delta when delta i is equal to iss by 2 what will be the current flowing through m1 iss iss and what is the current flowing through m2 zero zero okay now can you tell me ideally at what point of time the current flowing through suppose i am decreasing this voltage v into i am decreasing the voltage at what point of time the current flowing through m2 will become exactly equal to zero what is the max so i will ask the question in this way what is the maximum voltage for which the current flowing through m2 is equal to zero so when it switches off it will become zero right give yeah. me the voltage what is the vgs2 vth what is the current will become huh? vth vth so this voltage is vth when this voltage becomes vth the current through m2 becomes zero you should understand this characteristic 
is the correct characteristic of a MOSFET. So at value equal to VTH, the current is very close to zero. Ideally, the, the characteristic is something like this, practically something different. So this is the value, VTH. <coughs> okay, so we have reduced the value. So this becomes equal to zero and the current will flow completely through this. So can you tell me what will be the value of this V in one at which at which the current through M1 becomes equal to ISS and the current through M2 becomes equal to zero. VTH. What is the voltage here? So V in common board minus VTH. So V in one minus, no, no, I am saying, what is the voltage here? What you voltage you have applied here? So V in same minus V in one. V in two, right? So in this case, what is going to happen is the voltage at this point. So this Vs, How I can write the equation? Now you tell me the equation that I can write it here. V in 1 minus VGS1 plus VGS2 plus, sorry, minus V in 2 will be equal to 0. Again, uh, here I will draw the circuit, clear circuit, you will understand what I am saying. This is V in 1, right? This is V in 2. This is plus minus VGS1. This is plus minus VGS2. Kirchhoff's voltage law KVL can be applied across this loop. Yes, sir. Hmm. Can you tell me what is this? this is a plus minus? Okay, so even though it is a DC voltage, AC voltage, instantaneous value has to be taken. If our sign is wrong, we will be getting negative sign, right? So what is the equation? So v in one minus VGS one minus VGS one plus VGS two plus VGS two minus v minus v in two. Is equal to zero. It should be equal to zero, right? What is the relationship between V in one and V in two? Negative. Negative, right? Negative. So I will negative be getting the two V in one is equal to VGS one minus VGS two. VGS two minus VGS one. So VGS right? Two minus, huh? So minus one minus VGS one minus VGS two. Okay, VGS one minus VGS two. Okay. VGS2, right? This is the value. Agree. Now you tell me what I said about when the current becomes equal to zero. What is the value of VGS2? VTH. VTH, right? So it is twice V in one is equal to VGS1 minus what? VTH, right or not? Yes, sir. When the current become equal to, so that value of V in 1 is nothing but the value at which the current becomes completely equal to ISS. Current flowing through M1 becomes equal to ISS. What is this value? Now, I can write it in the form of, so V in 1. What is this value? V overdrive by 2. V overdrive, right? V overdrive. V overdrive of 1 will be equal to twice V in 1. Right? Now, what is the value of a current? ISS is equal to what? Half? V1 C ox W by L. V overdrive square. W by L 
v over drive square is the value that is that is flowing through the circuitry so in such case in this situation the current value so this value of v in 1 where the iss become equal to 0 as uh, so iss that is flowing through the circuit becomes equal to whole iss whole tail current is flowing through the circuit so this is the value this is the maximum value that we can apply to v in 1 right how so we should not move beyond this range so what should be the range of v in 1 and v in 2 what am suppose this is v in cm and this is the value so i am asking what should be this value and this value so minimum would be vth minimum is vth but what is going to happen in that case if minimum is vth exactly opposite operation is there right when this is positive this is going to become zero in negative case the total current will be iss here this will be equal to zero yes sir. so it will be maximum of uh, vt comma uh, v overdrive by 2 i think vt overdrive by 2 how it will be so because we have to take maximum of whichever is uh, so the question again what what i am saying is i got this equation right 2v in 1 equation i got this overdrive voltage value we have got what is the value of a overdrive voltage vov is square root of what iss divided by mu n c o c ox w by l this is for what when the current equal to ISS by, two. ISS by 2. ISS by 2. When the current is ISS, what is the value of VOV? 2 ISS. Square root of 2 ISS by mu n C O X W by L. So what is the relationship between these two? Root 2 times. Root 2 times, right? So the maximum value of VID the maximum value of vid so this is the relationship what i am saying is maximum value of voltage that should be applied is two times root vov right root two times vov is it right so we should divide by 2, right? So V in 1 should be equal to VOV 1 by 2. So root 2 VOV by 2. Root 2 VOV, but what is this VOV corresponding to what? What current? So ISS. ISS, right? We are talking in terms of ISS by 2. So this VOV is corresponding to what current equal to ISS by 2. Well, this is root 2, right? This VOV is corresponding to what? ISS by 2. Yes, ISS by 2. So it is ISS divided by mu n C O X W by L. What will happen if I take it inside? Yes, sir. So it will be uh, okay. ISS. So the maximum value. So what should be VID? VID should be within the range root 2 VOV to minus root 2 VOV. It should be within this range. If it is out of this range, what is going to happen? Understanding it or not, what I am saying? Yes, if the input differential voltage is with, out of this range, what will happen? Uh, sir, here 2V in equals to VOV we have written, right? So, sir, 2V in should be equal to root 2 VOV, then shouldn't the range be divided by 2 also here? 
so again i am saying so just suppose this is v in cm what is the current flowing through this in both the transistor what is the current flowing through both the transistors iss by 2 iss by 2 suppose on it i superimposed some ac signal which will cause now what is the what is the total value of the voltage now this is a dc voltage and over it i superimposed ac signal what is the instantaneous value suppose this is the time t1 is the time t1 v what is cm plus v v in one v in cm plus some voltage right yes sir o on the other side it will be v in cm minus some voltage right oh, sir i'm yes. really sorry but it's 11 o'clock we have our next class could you please continue this okay. in the next lecture okay 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 we'll stop here those who have doubts they can stay back if do, if you don't have a lecture others can leave thank you uh, sir i had one doubt hmm. uh, sir you had said that the change in vg does not really affect the change uh, like does not affect the current through the amplifier right initially hmm. but then here you said that the vn change uh, brings about a change in the hmm. current no the which input i was talking of there uh, sir the uh, voltage input to the gate Uh, which input we were talking about there are two kinds of inputs right one is common mode input right right yeah so when common mode input changes common mode is uh, practically in in some of the books they show it something like this you understand this difference they show it something like this hmm common mode is same voltage right huh. so if both of the voltage change by the same amount then the current does not change but if one changes independent of the other then it changes uh, so the total whatever voltage that is applied in actual practice is some dc voltage One volt, and over it, small AC voltage is superimposed. So, what is the instantaneous voltage value? How the instantaneous voltage, instantaneous voltage value V D or V G is capital V G plus small V G, right? Right. Hmm. So, I, I, initially, I was talking about V in C M. right sir okay. so what is happening okay. is hmm, there is one hello. volt ah hello tell me one volt over it some positive value is applied here is one volt some negative voltage is applied ac value so what is the instant input value so similarly vdc plus vsc this is 1.1 volt here it is 0.9 volt now is vgs same for both the transistor no sir no different na so this current will increase this current will decrease okay okay got it so sir if we vary the dc level as long as we are varying the both of them uh, dc level the same it does not change the uh, current it, it does not change the value of current flowing through both the transistor okay. as long as that vn cm is within that range Right, right, right. Okay, but if we change like one of them with respect to the other, basically, then the current will change. Yeah, that's that's the idea. Okay, that is a different. Okay, okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Sir. Hmm. sir um in common mode uh, how why did you put uh, minimum of vdd and vdd minus iss by 2 rd for uh, vcm max? So, so when you define any quantity for uh, voltage. in a circuit so maximum voltage available in the circuit is how much vdd not more than that right yes so if i write vdd minus iss by 2 into rd plus vth suppose this value is 2 volt this value is say point 0.2 volt and this value is 0.4 volt what is the addition comes 
2.2 is it possible to have 2.2 volt in a circuit no because 2 is only available right so i should write minimum of vdd and then vdd minus iss by 2 into rd plus vt right yes sir got it hmm. thank you yeah Any other question? Any question? Any question? Okay, then thank you.